thank you, Chairman. I, I want to thank both of you uh, for your service during these challenging times. I wanted to follow up, General Dempsey, on a question that Senator Wicker had asked you about, about uh, providing our advisors or our special forces, embedding them with the Iraqi forces. And I believe you said that you don't believe that that is necessary right now. Would you agree with me, though, that uh, airstrikes are much more effective with having our, our special forces or having a sort of JTAC capability in terms of the effectiveness of strikes on the ground with our people? It depends on the, con the kind of contact that the two forces are, uh, are having. And let me, let me explain. When, when the two forces are separate, when ISIL is at some geographic separation from the Iraqi security forces, it's not very difficult at all to discriminate between the targets. Sure, but one isn't our problem with when they're not out in open space, when we have to distinguish between, for example, civilian targets that is and correct. military targets, that yes. our people are very effective at that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's where I was headed. If, they, if we get into a circumstance where the forces are very intermingled, then the target discrimination becomes more difficult. But I will say, this isn't a light switch. Either you do it or you don't. There are technologies available that we didn't have five years ago that allow us to actually apply force uh, and to see the situation on the ground in ways we couldn't before. But I'm, I'm not walking away from what I said. If we get to the point where I think we need the JTAC with the Iraqi security forces, I'll make the recommendation. But I'm not there. You do not think we need that at this time? I do not. Can I ask you a question? Does General Austin, has he made a recommendation? What was his thought on this, uh, given that he's the CENTCOM commander, his prior experience in Iraq? We, on the Mosul Dam operation, the one I described earlier, which was very complicated, as much by the uh, introduction of, three, of the two different forces speaking two different languages, he did suggest that we should use the uh, JTACs in an accompany role. As we discussed it and worked through it, he found a way to do it as I described it to you. So, um, so he has not made recommend. So, uh, he has not made recommendations beyond the Mosul Dan operation that we should embed our uh, special forces or uh, certainly JTAC capability. Not at uh, this with time. Forces. He, no, he shares my view that there will be circumstances when we think that'll be necessary, but we haven't encountered one yet. Well, I think we've had experience this with this, though, haven't we, um, prior in Iraq with having our forces embedded and also with Afghanistan of our people being quite effective in terms of targeting the airstrikes. You would agree with me? Absolutely. We know how to do that. Yeah. I, I think that um, I certainly, thinking about as we're dealing with civilian populations, I, I'm not confident how this is going to happen without the assistance of our, of our, our trained uh, special operators on the ground here. Um, but I appreciate that you've said that you have not ruled this out. I have not in terms of recommendations. Thank you. Uh, has the President ruled it out? Well, at this point, he's, his stated policy is that we will not have U.S. ground forces in direct combat. So, yes. Including operators in JTAC and embedded on the ground. That's correct. Okay. But he, he has told me as well to come back to him on a case-by-case -case basis. So let me um, ask you about uh, the threat that we face, Secretary Hagel, General Dempsey. So General Allen, who I have great respect for, and I know both of you do as well, he has been appointed uh, the Special Presidential Envoy, Envoy for the Global Coalition to, to count, Counter ISIL. And we all know his experience, uh, no, not only in Iraq, but in Afghanistan. So he has described in August uh, ISIS as, or ISIL as a clear and present danger to the United States. Do you agree with his characterization? Uh, Senator, uh, I was asked the question earlier whether um, I ag agreed uh, uh, still with what I had said I, when my words were quoted back to me about an imminent threat to America's interest around the world, and I said, yes, uh, I do. ISIL is a threat to uh, America, our allies, our interests uh, around the world. Uh, I'm not going to answer for uh, General Allen, but I, I think we all agree, at, at least within the administration, General Allen, General Dempsey, General Austin, me, the President, and others, that ISIL is a threat. I said that in my testimony. The President of the United States said it uh, last week in his speech. Well, do you believe it's a, a present threat to us? Well, uh, a present threat meaning they, they, um, mm. uh, they uh, murdered two Americans uh, over the last couple of weeks, I'd say that's a pretty imminent threat. Uh, 
yeah, uh, and agree. other threats that, that they have uh, and, and, and how they threaten us. Well, as you know, um, our, our prayers continue to go out to the Foley and Sotloff families who, um, Jim Foley was from New Hampshire and Stephen Sotloff uh, went to school in New Hampshire. Uh, so I believe it's an absolute clear and present threat to us. Let me ask you about the Americans who have joined in Homeland Security Committee last week. We had testimony from our top Homeland Security officials as well as from the FBI about the 100 uh, Americans uh, that have either gone to Syria or attempted to go to Syria. And what I learned was that this is not a firm number. How confident are we that we have track of these individuals, that we know that there's only 100 involved? And I would ask the same question with regard to those who are holding Western passports, where um, we know that many of those countries, uh, unfortunately, Jim Foley's murderer, as you know, had a British accent. And uh, we have a, we're, have a B visa waiver program uh, with Great Britain. So how confident are we are in those numbers as we look at this homeland threat uh, the ability and track of those individuals to come back to the United States of America in some way? Well, Senator, I think uh, like, like any of these threats, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they always present imperfect situations. And when you ask uh, how confident, well, we're as, as confident as we can be, but you're constantly uh, working at trying to make it better, more secure. I'm announced in today in my testimony, it was announced a couple of days ago, what we're doing with Homeland Security, what we're doing with justice, what we're doing uh, with our border patrol in coordination with all of these other nations on identifying uh, these individuals that we do know or we are pretty sure of are in the Middle East, Syria, wherever. There may be some we don't know, but um, uh, we're constantly refining and focusing on this. Uh, I don't think we can ever be too confident that we've got it all. But, uh, but we have some confidence that, that we do have the numbers about right. Well, I, I thank you. My time is up. But uh, what I heard in the Homeland Security Committee last week uh, did not give me a great degree of confidence in terms of what we don't know, um, because the FBI has basically mm -hmm. said that 100 number could be many more. And also, we know less even about those where we don't always have full intelligence sharing with all the Western passport holders. So, no, that's right. This is a real and, issue uh, for us. It is an issue. Thank you. Thank you.